Welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen, and today we're gonna to make solid dish soap bars. I love this. It's a very economical way to get a dish soap that lasts a really long time. This is a very hard bar of soap. Uh, I drain it out after you use it, let it dry between uses. This thing will last you a long time. I think it's worth like several big jugs of liquid dish soap. It's that good. So a couple of things going on. When I make dish soap bars, I like to use cavity molds because the recipe can trace a little bit fast. So this is the mold I'm gonna use today. I have several of these and I think they're so pretty. I got these on Amazon. I'll leave a link down below. I think they're beautiful and they make the perfect size to uh, just last a long time. So being a cleaning bar of soap, this is going to have a 0% super fat. I would not recommend this for your body. I mean, it's fine. It's new, you know, the right pH for soap. It's not gonna be harsh, but it's definitely gonna dry your skin out if you, uh, you know, used it all over. So, so I would not use this in the shower as a body soap. I will specifically make this formula for cleaning dishes and other household cleaning. You can bubble up your water and use it to clean any surface it's great so for that along uh, with the cleaning in mind I'm going to be using lemon whoop, lemon essential oil in this instead of a fragrance because uh, essential or citrus essential oils have some really cool degreasing properties and uh, they smell really fresh and clean a lot of cleaners have citrusy scents so we're doing the lemon essential oil and one of the special things we're gonna to do today that I haven't done in my previous dish soap recipes is we're gonna be adding citric acid to the soap today and I'm gonna talk about adding citric acid. I'm also gonna do a body soap with citric acid, so we'll talk more into the chemistry of why you would wanna add citric acid to your soap. It does a couple of really cool things. Citric acid is a chelator, which means it's gonna attract the uh, metal ions and it, it reduces soap scum. It gives a squeaky clean feel. That's what the chelator properties do. And when it combines with the lye, when citric acid and sodium hydroxide combine, they make a sodium citrate. And that's just a really cool cleaning chemical thing. So there's a lot of chemistry going on and I just gave you the really short, you know, not fancy definition there. So I'm sure there's a lot more to say about all that, but I was just giving you the quick and dirty version. It'd be a super squeaky clean bar. So yeah. the citric acid is going in here today. We're gonna to add it to the lye solution. I'll talk you through how to do all that step-by-step step and uh, how to adjust your lye in the formula to make room for citric acid because citric acid does consume some of the lye. So you need to adjust the amounts and we'll talk about all of that as we get into this. So I need to get everything pulled together and let's come back and make some solid dish soap bars. All right, we are back and I wanted to show you my soap calc numbers here. I put the recipe, which will be written down below, but here it is on my computer screen. And um, so you can take a screenshot here and this is the entire recipe we're using today, less the citric acid and the increased lye. So this is the base recipe without the citric acid. But what I really wanted to note here is down here, why I wouldn't use this as a body bar. So the hardness is off the charts, great, super cleansing very low conditioning, high bubbles, creaminess is low. So this is a very cleansing bar. And this is what I wanted you to notice with these oils and percentages. So there is the base recipe. And now I'm going to put the camera down. Sorry about the shaky screen, it's me holding it. Um, and we'll talk about citric acid. And once we add citric acid, the lie number is going to change. And we'll talk about that in a minute. We are back and it's time to prep our lye water, which will have the citric acid in there. And I'm gonna talk about the numbers now. Let me show you <laughs> what a scrambled mess my recipe book looks like. Here is the recipe I'm doing today with the total numbers after the citric acid. Here are my bullet notes on how I'm gonna to talk to you about it and everything. If you can make sense of this, it's so funny. This is how I, this little, notebook i keep one every time i make soap lotion anything that i make in my soap studio i have this little book i write the recipe the date i made it any notes about the fragrance how it behaved 
everything. This is my little book. I have a stack of these over the years that's added up. So here's the recipe. Here are my notes. Let me try and explain the citric acid load. Um, and also let me just say that Ellie's Everyday Soap Making has an excellent video on adding citric acid to soap and she really breaks it down in an easy to understand format and she's covered it so thoroughly. And there are other soapers out there that have covered this. So I don't need to reinvent the wheel here with you all, but I'm gonna give you a quick bullet note here. So um, citric acid when combined with sodium hydroxide makes sodium citrate. And that is a chelator which binds to metal ions in hard water. And so it makes, uh, it reduces soap scum. It makes for a squeaky clean rinse. It's just a great additive in everyday soap too, like bar soap. And I will be adding citric acid into my recipes more often and talking about it more. Um, and you wanna add citric acid into your soap per volume of oils at a rate of about 2%, anywhere from half a percent up to 2%. I don't like to do more than that. If you get over 2%, it can, after the soap dries, it can leave like little crystal salts on top and uh, it's there's nothing wrong with it. It's just a cosmetic thing. And 2% gets the job done really well. So why go more than that, I think. So at a rate of 2% citric acid, you take the total volume of your oils and then figure out 2%. So in this case, I'm looking at my book here, I'm not talking to the microphone. In this case, the total grams is 482 grams, 0.4. So 482.4 grams of oils in this recipe. All right, so 2% of 482.4 grams is 9.6, and you can round it up to 10. That little bit of difference really isn't gonna make or break this, and 10's a much easier number to work with, so we're just gonna go with 10 grams of citric acid. So now we need to know what the lie to citric acid issue is. So the quick calculation is for every one gram of citric acid that we just figured, which is 10 grams. So for every one gram of citric acid, it's gonna take 0.624 grams of lye to counteract the citric acid because the citric acid, acid absorbs the lye. It doesn't lower the pH, it, absor it actually eats lye. So for every one gram of citric acid, we need 0.624 grams of lye. And so the calculation would be 10 times 0 0.624. And that equals 6.2 grams of extra lye. So the recipe that I showed you in the beginning on soap calc, you would take that lye total and add 6.2 grams of lye to that total. And um, that will balance out the citric acid. And when it's all said and done, this soap will have a 0% super fat, because again, this is a cleansing bar. So we don't want super fat. I'm not going for luxury here. We're going for cleaning. Um, so there it is. <laughs> I really hope that made sense. Again, go check out Ellie's Every Day. She's got it down and she has like a nice whiteboard example and uh, all the things written down. I will have the calculation and how to figure your citric acid and the recipe down below in the description box. But um, I hope I'm not making it sound more complicated than it is because it really isn't that complicated. Once you kind of get the numbers and you figure out what you're doing, it's not a big deal. Um, so anyway, all that being said, let's get to the recipe here. So I'm gonna be talking about now the adjusted lye rate when I make this, uh, we're making the lye solution right now. And so this is the lye volume with the extra lye in there that's going to eat up the citric acid, if that makes sense. So what I need in this little pot here is, I'm doing 142 grams of distilled water today. So let's get that measured in here. This water is cold, I keep it in the refrigerator. All right, so we've got our water in there, and now to the water, we're gonna dissolve our citric acid in here. I'm not doing sugar, I'm not doing silk fibers. Again, this is not a body bar. So only citric acid, we're gonna get it dissolved up in here. Okay, so I need um, 9.6 to 10 grams of citric acid crystals. All right, and I'm just gonna stir this around to get it dissolved in here. 
And as soon as it's dissolved, we'll measure out our lye and get it in here and let this start cooling off. All right, we're back and it's time to measure out our sodium hydroxide and the adjusted amount is 90.4 grams of sodium hydroxide. Okay, our citric acid is completely dissolved in there. There's no crystals left. And now we're gonna add our lye into our distilled water citric acid and stand back. Do not breathe the fumes. And we'll, I like to stir my lye until it's completely dissolved and then you can walk away and let it cool. Um, but if you feel any grit, keep stirring until it's all dissolved because it can chunk up if you don't get it you know, stirred down really nice. And that heats up really good and hot. I don't know if you can see the steam rising off of it, but lye water is nothing to mess around with. It gets hot. All right, I don't feel any grit. It's completely dissolved. I'm probably gonna go throw this in an ice bath to speed along the cooling. But if you make this and walk away for a couple hours, it'll cool off by itself. Either way is fine. I've made lye several days ahead of time too. And, um, it gets a little lye lint on top, but other than that, it's totally fine. As long as you have a safe place to keep it where there's no children and pets and things around, um, making your lye water ahead of time speeds things up when it's soap making day. All right, let's get our oils measured out. All right, the first oil we need is 396.89 or <laughs> you can round it up to 397 and it'll be okay, but uh, 396.9 grams of coconut oil. All right, the next uh, oil or wax, if you will, is steric acid. And this makes a really nice, hard, long-lasting bar of soap. So I like it in my dish soaps. So we need 14.7 uh, grams of steric. All right, now I'm gonna melt down my coconut oil and steric acid. I'm gonna pulse this in the microwave until it's fully melted. If you hate the microwave, you could put this in a um, double boiler, use a container that's appropriate for that. You could definitely double boil it, but I like to get this pre-melted. You could also do the heat transfer method with your lye if you like to do that. Um, but uh, today, for today's purposes, I'm gonna go ahead and pre-melt this. Heat transfer is where you pour your hot lye water over your hard oils to melt them just naturally. It's a great process, but I'm gonna go melt these and we'll be back with the liquid portion. All right, these are all melted down and I like to add a couple of liquid oils um, for two reasons. One is castor oil is going to be the next oil whoops, that's going in here. Uh, I got this one off Amazon and castor is a lather supporter in soap and I really want the lather to be abundant and it, we're just a very small percentage, 14.7 grams of castor and I just like how it is in the soap. So let's get that measured off just a little bit here. All right, and last but not least, I got my olive oil from, uh, this one is from Costco or Sam's Club. I shop both of those places and they have good prices on olive oil. I like the olive oil because it, um, it makes this soap a little more skin friendly for me when you, because I don't wear gloves when I do the dishes. I'm using my bare hands. And so the olive oil to me just adds a touch of conditioning in this, even at a 0% super fat. Um, you can do cleaning soaps with 100% coconut oil. They are amazing. But I like the olive oil. That's what I do. It's my recipe. So I'm going to add 56.7 grams of olive oil in here. And you saw the numbers. This is still a super cleansing, super bubbly bar. I just think it makes it a touch more skin friendly. All right, and to the oils, I'm gonna go ahead and add my essential oil of lemon in here at a rate of, I'm doing it at 3% because this is a cleaning bar and I like the degreasing value of citrus oils. So I'm gonna do 3%. If this was gonna be a skin bar, you're gonna to wanna to look that up, maybe do 2%. But anyway, at a rate of 3% in this bar, I need 14 grams of lemon essential oil. So I'm gonna go ahead and add it into the oils here. All right, we are back and it's time to add our citric acid lye water to the oils. This was so simple to do. Um, 
and I am planning on whisking this to get up to a trace, um, but if it's taking a while, because sometimes uh, citrus scents can slow things down, I do have my stick blender right here off to the side. But I know I talked about this a lot and it can sound overcomplicated, but this really is quite a simple recipe. And if you wanna skip the citric acid and just do the base recipe from soap calc, there you go too. But um, I think the citric acid really adds something special to this. So got the essential oil all whisked in here and here is our cooled off. I put it in an ice bath, nice and cool, lye solution. I'll just get it in there and get this whisked up and pour it into the mold. I have my silicone mold on a tray so that in case I need to move it around, um, these are very floppy, so I always put them on a tray so I can move it around if I need to. Boy, it smells good in here. That lemon essential oil is nice. I think I'll throw the stick blender in there for just a second seems to be behaving itself, no big deal. There we go, we've got a nice light trace. And let's get it poured into the molds. It's the next day and these smell so good. That lemon essential oil just smells fabulous. So let's get these out of the mold. Unmolding is no problem at all. These are nice and hard bars. I will give these a full cure time, which is about four to six weeks. Uh, just so they're extra, extra hard. I want any extra water evaporated out. I want these to be super long lasting. So let me go ahead and trim up the sides here and then I'm going to weigh this and I'll tell you how many pucks we got here. So I just take my little vegetable peeler around the corners because even though this is a dish soap I want it to be comfortable in your hand. Um, so that just makes it nice and smooth and there it is. And if you don't like flowers you can put it in your dish that way or you can put it that way. Um, I do not keep mine in a dish. These work great in a shallow cup and you can take a sponge or a scrubby brush and lather it up kind of like a shaving soap. Um, but I like to keep it up so I can set it on its side and let it air dry. It'll last even longer if you let it air dry. If you have a draining dish soap with holes in it or um, just some sort of a soap lift, it'll last a lot longer. Let's give this away and see what we've got here. So this is 3.55 ounces, so three and a half ounces, and it'll probably lose, you know, maybe a little bit of weight. These are gonna be over three ounces when it's all said and done, um, but I will call them a three ounce bar, and that's just perfect. So we got seven three ounce bars with this recipe that we did. So now let me get these cleaned up. I'm gonna wait a few days and we will come back and do a lather test. And I will do a pH test for you to show you that a 0% super fat soap with citric acid still has a nice neutral soap friendly pH in there. So let me get these cleaned up and we'll be back in a little bit. been a couple of weeks and we're back to do a lather test and a pH test and all the fun stuff with this soap. Um, when I talk about a draining soap dish, something like this is perfect. It's raised up, the water can drain off your bar soap. So this would be perfect by a sink. Um, soap lift, these are very loosely wound, uh, made out of like a PVC type material and the water can drain through. It's called a soap lift. This is appropriate. So those are just some examples of, of ways 
to get air to circulate around your soap so that it dries out in between uses and it lasts a whole lot longer. So first things first, um, I brought my little bamboo scrubber brush. This is from my kitchen sink upstairs. So I'll show you how it lathers with that. And here is my sample dish. I'm gonna wash my cup multiple times today. So let's get to it. First things first, yeah, just gotta wet the bar. Simple as that. Let me just do a lather test with my hands here to show you. And again, when I do my dishes upstairs, I don't wear rubber gloves. Some people are good about that. Good for you if you are. I'm not, but it just lathers right away. So it's a beautiful cleansing lather. It doesn't feel harsh on your skin at all. It, it's, it's great. So let me show you this lather. So what I would do sometimes is just get my hands lathered up and grab the dishes and, and just work it with my hands. It's a nice, thick, kind of a foamy lather. And now that I've got a lather built up, let's go ahead and do our pH strip test right on here. So here's my little test strip. And we'll put it on here. There we go. All right, let's come over to our, this is my little, this is my little book of test strips here. And let's come up here and read it. A good pH for bar soap is anywhere between eight and 10, nine being good, because it's right in the middle. And I'm gonna say we are right at a nine. So even with a 0% super fat, we are right in here for a really good, absolutely perfect pH on a bar soap. All right, let's do the scrubby brush on our bar here. Here's my little dish in the sink. And I like to just run it around there. I just pick up a little on there. It's got a nice little lather built up on it. Um, and scrub away. Once you get your brush loaded, it scrubs up really nice and it leaves a, just a really good squeaky clean finish um, and it cleans, or it rinses nice and clean without water spots it off and it leaves a really good sort of squeaky clean. It just, it rinses so clean, no water spots. That's the citric acid working for you. I think it's fabulous. So again, my tip is to let this drain on any kind of a draining soap dish in between uses. You'll get a lot longer lasting bar out of it. And, I and here's how I like to wrap all of my round soaps. This is a two inch round label that I got from onlinelabels.com. And I use uh, unbleached round coffee filters and they just make the perfect eco-friendly wrapping for a round soap, I find. They're just wonderful for a three ounce size. So these are a nice palm size bar. And then the label is the sticky that holds it all together, super low tech, but really pretty. You can actually smell through this wrapping, so it's a scent through, which I love. So you can smell that lemon essential oil. It's just all good, I love it. So thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed the recipe and I didn't, I didn't confuse the issue too much with the citric acid. It's really not that complicated, but it is a wonderful additive to soaps for a good clean rinse. So thank you for joining me and I hope that you have a wonderful day.